We we are talking about uh, education, avoiding indoctrination camps, government indoctrination camps. Uh, Mike, you've been a big advocate of getting away from uh, the, the centralized education system. What's a little bit of your backstory in terms of homeschooling and education and kind of your personal beats on that? So uh, my daughter was ne has never been enrolled in public education from the jump just because I never believed in the state being in complete control of my daughter's education. Um, we were in private school for preschool and kindergarten and first grade. COVID happens. I'm, I'm literally – one of the luxuries of, of being in private school is you can actually, like, speak to the principal and have real conversations and get a hold of administrators and, and figure out what they're going to be planning. So – that's one degree of separation from the state where you can actually have a say in what happens in your child's education and be in the loop. Um, and I didn't like the answers I was getting about the way they were going to be operating in school. Um, so basically at that point, I started doing research on, all right, what homeschooling programs are out there to help me teach my daughter? And I did research, like you were saying about how does it work in New Jersey? Does she got to take standardized testing? Do I have to do anything? Do I have to report to the local board of education? Do I have to do anything? And everything was like, nah, you're on your own. The only thing you got to do is prove you're doing it if somebody calls you out. So if somebody calls, the only thing in Jersey is if somebody like calls and says, you're not educating, you're, if somebody rats on you and says, you're just on vacation all the time, you're not doing, like you have to like prove that you're doing something, like the kid learns something, but it's not even like, there's not even a, a standard formal test for that either. It's just here, yeah, this is what we've been reviewing. Um, so at that point, I found K12.com, which had a pretty nice, affordable, relatively affordable uh, program that I could use to help teach her things. And I don't, I've never taught anybody anything. I've never taught kids anything. I didn't know the right way. So it comes with like a, like a teacher's book that teaches you how to like explain things and use terms that they're going to do well with. And, it ended up being a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. You know, it, you know, from the hours of like nine to twelve, we were able to hammer out school and whatever I thought, whatever we needed to go there. It was only like the four core subjects: language arts, math, um, history. We did art, and then I did my own little thing throughout the day. Obviously, right? I would take like real world scenarios, and we would tie it into what we were learning, and we would do all this other stuff. And I was more involved with her education and teaching her. Even outside of the normal school hours, than I'd ever been before, right? Like, because you never know what they're learning in class. And so they're like, oh, what's you doing school today? I don't know. I don't remember. Johnny said this. Sally said that. You don't really get an idea as to what's happening in the classroom. But when you're actually teaching everything, and you, you're following a program to try and keep them on pace with the traditional set. And you know what's going on. You know what you're teaching them. And you know what you just went over. You know that you taught them how to group five things of three. So that when you're out in public and there, you know there's five groups of three grouped out there naturally, oh, look, how many is there? And then they do the math real quick. Right? Like that's the stuff that really boils down to it. But the last year has been eye-opening when it comes to education. Like it's not nearly as hard as you would imagine. Um, she reads just fine. Thank you. I did a great job. You know? Like, <laughs> it's... it's it, it wasn't that bad. No, that's awesome. I, you, you, uh, you had to make a lifestyle change too, right? Like there, there was not, I think what a lot of people will say is, oh, well, you know, myself and my wife, we both have to work. We have to, you know, do a certain number of hours. We have to make a certain amount of money, especially in a state like New Jersey, where it's freaking ridiculously expensive to live. Um, you actually had to make a lifestyle change in order to accommodate this, right? I've made huge lifestyle changes. So I went from a very comfortable six-figure job with a selling, you know, managing a car dealership with a group of people that I had known for 15 years. You know, was doing great. Had given me everything I have in life up to now. Um, I was fortunate that my wife had just got her nursing degree and had just started nursing two weeks before all the lockdowns. Wow. So I took a step back started selling life insurance, which I've pulled back even further on that recently as well. Um, and my wife basically took over that one role because now she works overnights, three days a week. Everything is handled that way. She's home four days a week. I'm home every day. I'm still working, just not nearly as much. We just, we really stepped back, you know, we don't go out as much. We spent a lot of money on crap 
we didn't realize we don't need to spend money on, right? Mm-hmm. And then recently, I took advantage of the housing market. I saw, hey, the housing market's insane, especially in New Jersey. Uh, you had all these people coming from New York City, coming down, spending crazy money on houses. And I said, I can sell my house, become debt-free, have a chunk of money, move to another state, and have even less to worry about and really be able to control my life and control where my daughter is going to get educated and how she's going to get educated. So, yeah, I, I made a huge lifestyle change. I just sold my house, you know, as part of the lifestyle change, you know. just but I, I had Now I get it. it. Now, now, now I understand why you're dressed the way that you are. You live in a Winnebago and you think you're Cousin Eddie. Like, that's the way it is. <laughs> and that's the last part of it, right? We bought, it, we bought a camper. And we said, you know what? We're gonna not. We're gonna take this teaching my daughter thing one step f- further. And we had a conversation a few weeks ago where we, with the three of us were all in the chat and we're talking. And it was, it was, yeah, it's not educating your kid; it's raising your kid, right? Like you're the only one raising your child. You take the decision that I'm going to be the only one raising your child. It's not a bad thing to outsource raising your kid. That's we use our family members for it. We use our friends for it. Their grandparents, all of that. Some people choose to use the state. The state is my enemy. Therefore, I will never allow my enemy to have have agency, have decision over what happens in my child's life. But, you know, I decided that I want to completely, I want to be the one responsible for raising my child. I want her to, if she wants to go to her grandfather's house, I want her to go there because she wants to go hang out with her grandfather. Not because, hey, dad, listen, I really need you to take her for the day. I got this, that, 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 and this. And this is what we're like. I want to make our life so that we can live off of one income. If that means leaving New Jersey, if that means selling the house, like whatever that means we have to do, I'm going to do it. And I'm not, I'm not going to live to what everybody else's standard of what should happen anymore. It's just not going to happen. I'm going to take those great bold steps and we're going to, we're going to, we're going to experiment here. We're going to try crap and we're going to live our own lives freely. And, I bought the we we bought the trail the camper and we're gonna spend the next three months camping all around the state. She's gonna learn all different things about the outdoors and all kinds of fun stuff and she's just gonna have a blast. I'm gonna give her the summer of her life and then we're gonna buy a lot of land in West Virginia, build a cabin and then buy another lot of land in Florida and get the hell out of here. All right. Well, that's gonna be a future episode, so you're definitely coming back to talk about that one. Um we're we're gonna talk more about homesteading and stuff. Mm-hmm.